In this video, we're going to look at exponential functions and in particular, the function e to the x. The general form of an exponential function is the f of x is equal to a to the x, where a is a positive constant. So we can write the f of x is equal to a to the power of x, where a is strictly greater than zero. An example might be now the f of x might be 3 to the power of x. So we have a positive constant, which is 3, and we raise this to the power of x. We call this the base, and we call this the exponent. Another function of x, let's call this the g of x. The g of x might be 7 to the power of x. We might have another one, h of x, and h of x might be now 1 quarter to the power of x. In general, if our value of a is between 0 and 1, we have decay. If we have now a value of a greater than 1, then we have growth. These are all examples of exponential functions. e to the x is known as the exponential function. The number e is 2.718 correct to four significant figures. It was discovered by a mathematician called Euler, and it's what we call an irrational number. So like pi and like root 2, these are non-terminating, non-recurring decimals. So e is just a number, 3 is just a number, 7 is just a number, and then e is approximately now 2.718. And that now can be found on a calculator. So if you look now, we could press alpha, e, there's e, and that will give us for 2.718 and so on and so forth. We could now do shift e and then to the power of 1. We could see that's for 2.718. If we now increase the power, we can see now as the value of the exponent, or in this case, x, is going to increase, this function is going to get very big very quickly. So e to the power of 9, and we can keep going, this is going to get huge. So this now is the number e, and we're going to focus on the exponential function e to the x. To begin with, what I want to do is graph some of these particular exponential functions. So if we go ahead and do that, we've got now 1 half to the x, 1 to the x, 2 to the x, 3 to the x, and 4 to the x. Clearly, 1 to the x is just going to be a straight line. 1 to the power of 1 million is 1. We've got 2 to the x. We can see this isn't quite as steep as 3 to the x, which in turn isn't quite as steep as 4 to the x. So we can see now that as the value of a increases, these get steeper. They are all now passing through this point, which is 0, 1. 2 to the power of 0 is 1, 3 to the power of 0 is 1, a to the power of 0 is 1. We've got this curve right here, and this one seems to be decreasing now. So y is decreasing as x is increasing. So this is modelling decay. So, for example, if this was the family car and we started at time 0, over time now its value would decrease. These could model populations. So starting at time 0, we could have now these increasing as now x gets very large. So these now are all examples of exponential functions. We've got the base, in this case, 4, 3, 2, and 1, and then we have the exponent. Somewhere between 2 to the x and 3 to the x lies e to the x. e to the x is an incredibly important function in maths. So we can model things, for example, in science, finance, technology, or even sport. The main feature that makes e to the x special is that the function itself is the same as the derivative. So if we have y is equal to e to the x, dy by dx, the gradient function is also e to the x. What we're going to do is look at y is equal to 2 to the x and 3 to the x and consider the gradient of each of these. When we're talking about the gradient, we're talking now about a tangent line to the curve at any given point. So let's go ahead and study 2 to the x and 3 to the x. What we've got here is a graph. We've got one here and we've got one here. We've got now y is equal to 2 to the power of x. This here, the black line, is the gradient function. Here we've got y is equal to 3 to the x and the gradient function dy by dx. We can see here that the gradient function is below and above uh, here. So we've got 3 to the x and the gradient is above, 2 to the x and it's below. Therefore, somewhere between 2 and 3, we should be able to find a function where the gradient sits exactly on that function. And that is e. So 2.718, correct to four significant figures, is that value. 
With E, we leave it as an exact value. We don't write down 2.718. We write down E. We evaluate it to powers. So for example, now if you wanted E to the 12, that's what it is. You wouldn't do 2.718 to the power of 12. That is not the exact answer. It's a good approximation, but it isn't now E to the 12. So we leave it where it is. Let's go ahead and study these gradients. You're yet to differentiate now an exponential function. The derivative of now 2 to the x, so if we have y is equal to 2 to the x, and we'll write it just here, we can say that dy by dx, the gradient function, would be 2 to the x multiplied by the natural log of 2. The natural log is the inverse of e to the x. If I now take this and do dy by dx, so we'll take dy by dx and divide it now by y, we're going to end up with 2 to the power of x multiplied by the natural log of 2 divided by 2 to the x. So all I'm doing is taking now the gradient function and dividing it by the corresponding y coordinate. We can see here that we're going to just have this constant value of the natural log of 2. The natural log of 2 is just a constant. It's around 0.7. So if we wanted to find that, we would press ln, which is the natural log, and then we would have now 2. And that gives us approximately now 0 0.7, and that is a constant. If we now look at this one right here, if y is equal to 3 to the power of x, then dy by dx, the gradient function, will be equal to 3 to the power of x multiplied by the natural log of 3. So again, if we take now the gradient function and divide it by the original function, we'll have 3 to the x, the natural log of 3, divided now by 3 to the x. And again, we can see that these 3 to the x is going to cancel. So if we take the gradient function and divide it by the corresponding y coordinate, we're going to get this constant. And now the natural log of 3 is approximately 1.1, give or take. So let's go ahead and look at this right here. So we've got now the natural log of 3, which is about 1.1. So 1.0986 and so on and so forth. Okay, the natural log of E is log base E. So if, for example, now we write this out, we know that the log, so if we take log base 2 of 2, the answer is 1. This is saying what power is 2 raised by to get 2? The answer is quite clearly 1. When we have the natural log, this is now log base E. Often you just hear it being called log. The further you go on with mass, generally the natural log, or ln of x if we look at its function, is said to be log x. So if I take log base e of e, this is going to be 1. So we can say that the natural log of x, which is the inverse, now the natural log of x is going, and we'll just write here, natural log of e is going to be equal to 1. Okay, so let's now consider this function e to the x. It's sitting somewhere between 2 to the x and 3 to the x. So if I write now that y is equal to e to the x, then what we're going to have now is the following. We will have dy by dx following this exact protocol. We will have now e to the x multiplied by the natural log of e. Now, the natural log of e is just 1. So if we take now y and we divide now the derivative by y, this is going to give me e to the x. Now, what's going to happen? e to the x is going to cancel. We know that the natural log of e is now 1. So we can say now that dy by dx will be equal now to y. Or, if you like, at this stage, you could have said that dy by dx over y is equal to 1. Therefore, dy by dx is equal to y. We know that y is equal to e to the x. So we can say that dy by dx is equal to e to the x. And that is hugely important. So we've got now here... 2 to the x, 3 to the x, and now we've got e to the x. If we go ahead and look at that graph now, here we are. This is y is equal to e to the x, and we've got the gradient function dy by dx. It's a perfect match, and we've just seen how that works. So whilst you're not 100% happy potentially with the derivative of 2 to the x, being 2 to the x for natural log of 2, we can see that that's a result that we can quote and use. If you want to explore this part in more detail, the part that we've just looked at, if you get a good graphing calculator, you can pick points on this and show now that it will always be approximately 0 0.7. And with this one, always approximately this constant value of 1.1. 1 .1. 
Unfortunately, I don't have the time or the, the graph anything in this particular software to do that. But these are the simply results that we can quote. And the end product now is that if we have y is equal to e to the x, where this is the exponential function, the gradient function dy by dx is also e to the x. In the next video, we will spend some time looking at the natural log of x, which is the inverse of e to the x. In later videos, we'll also look at differentiating both the exponential function and the natural log function. Let's just go ahead, though, and define now e to the x as a function. So what we're going to have, and we'll write it just here, y is equal to e to the x. If we consider the domain, the domain is going to be all real values. So we've got now a domain. We say that x belongs to the reals. So we can take any value along now the x-axis, and this will give rise to a positive number. So we can say that y is always going to be now greater than zero. We don't have negative values. Quite clearly, we're not going to have negative values. So if I have now e to the power, let's just write this down. Let's say we have e to the power of minus 10. This is not a negative number. This is simply saying 1 over e to the power of 10. So as we can see now, as x tends to positive infinity, we can say that e to the x will tend to positive infinity. As x tends to negative infinity, then e to the x is going to tend to zero. We have an asymptote, and the asymptote is now the line just here. So this is the line, and we'll put it on just here. Let's go ahead and do that. So this is the line, y is equal to zero, and that is an asymptote. So we never have negative values. The only way that we'd have a negative value is if this graph was transformed. In terms of transformations of the graph, the same rules apply. So if we went ahead and looked at some sketches, let's go ahead. Uh, in fact, we've got this just, just giving us an example now of where e to the x sits just here. So we've got 2 to the x, e to the x, 3 to the x, 4 to the x. That gives you some idea. But let's go ahead and look at uh, transforming the curve. So let's say now we have our coordinate axis, and you will be expected to sketch this. So if we now just sketch e to the x, your sketch look, should look something like so. So we've got now coming up, and it's going to get very big very quickly, like so. So we could say now that y is equal to e to the x. So domain or real values range strictly greater than zero. Now we could do now, for example, let's go ahead and do e to the x plus one. So if we were asked to now do the f of x plus one, all we would do is just lift this up and raise it by one unit. So what we would do is put now an asymptote here and we would have this point. So on here, we've got y is equal to e to the x. We've got zero comma one. So if I did now y is equal to e to the x plus one, then all we're going to do is move this up. So we end up with something looking like so. So there's no change in the curve. We're going to get this point 0, 2, and we've got the line y is equal to 1. I've just increased that. In the same way, if we decreased it by, say, 3, we'd just simply move the asymptote down. We can look, for example, now, and we'll put this on. Say we were asked to graph now y is equal to e to the minus x. So y is equal to e to the power of minus x. We can see now that the negative is inside. So with this particular case, instead of coming this way, we would come this way round. So that's very similar to the one half to the x that we saw. So this time we're going to be modeling now exponential decay. We'll still have now zero comma one, but it will be coming down here. So we can see now as x gets very big, we could write this as one over e to the x. We know that e to the minus x would be using rules in e to the x. So as x gets very big, so as x tends to pos infinity, we can say that y will now tend to zero. So we can see as this gets very big, this fraction, the denominator of the fraction is going to end up getting huge, and therefore the fraction will get small. In the same way, when we take negative values, just consider if we had now e to the power of minus minus 10, this is e to the power of 10. So somewhere up here, we're going to get a very big number. So that's all we've got. So for example, now if we had, uh, let's go for, let's draw another one. Let's say we had y is equal to minus e to the x. This is simply going to be a reflection now in the x-axis. So we're taking the function, and before we had something that looked like so, so we come up this way. This is just going to be reflected. So we end up now, same asymptote, this point is going to look something like so, and we're going to have now 0, comma, minus 1. So this now is the negative. 
So exactly the same shape and we go from there. We can also look at horizontal translations. We can pick the curve up. So if we had e to the x minus 1, we could move it right by 1. If we had e to the x plus 2, we could move it to the left by 2 units. So as you can see, all of these basic graph transformations apply to the exponential function e to x. So there's a brief intro. We've only looked at the tip of the iceberg or such, or some uh, any saying along those lines. So let's just recap what we have looked at. We've looked now at when we have exponential functions. These have a, a value of a, which is a positive constant. We raise it to a power. So if we have a value of a greater than one, we can see that these model growth. So for example, two to the x models growth, three to the x, four to the x models growth. If a is between now zero and one, and that is strictly between zero and one, then we have decay. If it is one, we have this straight line. We've met now the exponential function e to the x. So when you hear about the exponential function, it's this one, it's this green one. So this one right here is two to the x. So we've got two to the x, y is equal to two to the x. Here, we've got now three to the x just here, and there is some number, which is an irrational number e, which sits somewhere in between, where the derivative of a function is the same as the original function, which allows us to work, certainly in calculus, with a lot, a lot easier, uh, a lot easier work, the, the work that you'll have. So for example, if we were trying to constantly differentiate these exponentials, it would become a mess. The fact that dy by dx is also e to x means that we can model particular growth or decay and use e to the x conveniently and fair, in a fairly straightforward way. In the next video, we're going to meet the natural log of x, which is the inverse. We're going to look at how the natural log will allow us to solve equations, so exponential equations and also logarithmic equations. So there's the basic introduction to e to the x, and then in the next video, we'll move on to the natural log of x.